everybody. How's it going? Um, are you, can you hear me okay? I always want to check that because you never know. <laughs> um, it's Tuesday. It's the Midday Quilt Nerd Show and uh, I love being here. It's been a crazy morning, but um, <laughs> I was kind of, uh, okay, good. Thanks everybody. Uh, thank you, by the way, to my mods and all my subscribers. Um, yeah, we're building this thing and we're doing it together because if you're not here, It'd be the saddest thing in the world, you know? And uh, I mean, I might still I might still do it. The whole genesis of this show, Quilt Nerd, um, came from a desire to share the stuff I learn. I'm researching for, well, a couple new things, which is really fun, and a couple new projects, and um, lectures, and I don't know. I mean, articles, all kinds of stuff. And I've, you know, I've done this for years now. I've been around for a minute in the quilt world. And uh, I used to make a lot of quilts, but then I started getting nerdy about the history and culture of quilts. And so, so I'm researching all this stuff and looking at amazing uh, quilts and art. And I was doing it and, you know, showing, what, 10% of it eventually in some kind of format. And I saw this journalist who, who did, hey, Jupiter's Nest, thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate you. Welcome to Quilt Church. Um, so yeah, I saw this journalist and she kind of, she live streamed her research on Twitch and I was like, oh my God, if I did that, you know, I could hang out with people and show you the kinds of things I'm finding and the kinds of things you find in real time. And we could just, you know, have a little nerd party. So, um, oh, Quilty Mouse. Okay. Well, Quilty Mouse, you just said that you want a Quilt Nerd sweatshirt really bad. Well... Interesting. I had the logo meeting with Rohan yesterday. That's right. I thought it was on Monday, but I was wrong. It was yesterday. And we had a, thanks Bonnie. Oh man, I appreciate that a lot. Um, I wanna say hi to everybody um, in just a second, but I, I saw a Quilty Mouse, saw, glanced down and saw the chat. And um, yeah, I had my logo meeting with the designer yesterday. He's wonderful. It was so good to see him. We worked together at the school paper when I was in grad school. He was an undergrad. He's so talented. Rohan McDonald. Why, I should just, well, I'd type it for you, but I I have finger puppets on. I want. I thought they would, hold on. The green screen doesn't like that. But I picked the ones that don't have green on them. Maybe. Hey, Ben Burrito, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. And you know what? I have information about the thimbles the thimbles because it was asked the other day what the thimbles are for so we'll talk about that but these are finger puppets why do they not like her little apron anyway it's it's red riding hood and the wolf uh i got them for my friend sophie's baby but i thought well that'll cheer that i mean not that i'm down but it's just i have so much good news for you i have so much good news and it's and part of the good news thanks faith um part of the good news is that there's a hype train halfway on its way. Um, part of the good news is why things were a little bit crazy. So yesterday I had the meeting with the logo designer. Yeah, Rohan McDonald. Oh yeah, I was gonna type his name. Um, yeah, yeah, and I think it's rohanmcdonald.com as well. When you see it, you'll know we're in really good hands. Um, there's so many designers that I know, but there's something about the simplicity and just the awesomeness of Rohan's work that I think will be really good for us. And um, uh, he he's tuned into the show because he's totally, you know, he's like a Zoomer. And so he has tuned into the show and he's watching it and he's like, so good. And he gets it and he's excited and he, anyway. So, um, so I had that meeting with him in the office that Eric and I rented yesterday. We rented an office and I, I have been doing this show and everything like so many people who have the luxury of working from home, who are able to do that, you know, during this pandemic for two years and a two years ago, right now, I pulled out my journal and was looking at it with Eric. I mean, it was crazy. Thanks, Myra. Yeah, it's something to cheer about. You know, people, we, we've all struggled in our ways. Some, you know, more dire than others, the, the struggles that we've gone through in this pandemic. This is a 900 square foot apartment. It's one bedroom. This whole setup is, I mean, we don't have a dining room table, you know, because Eric sits at one end and I sit at the other. 
And I just, it was when he came home and, and I guess there's just another body in the space and more stuff. And I was like, but it was happening before. I can't do it. I can't, I can't. And, and I'll mask and I'll do all the stuff and I'll get whatever boosters. But we found an office space that's a shared, you know, co-working space. And, oh, Faith, man, thanks. I mean, I mean, I, I was a little bit like, um, I was almost like cryy earlier. So you can't say stuff like that because I might be like, oh. Um, but uh, yeah, I just couldn't do it. I mean, I just, I was like, I can't, we can't have this like streaming gear in the living room anymore. I mean, I was like, oh, 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 I can't do it. I can't do it. I hit the limit. And and so we, there's this place called um, Workbox that's around the corner. It's a WeWork, you know, competitor. It's a little ratchet. I have to say, <laughs> like, it's cheaper than WeWork, which is good. And because uh, we had a WeWork office for a while. Um, I am verklempt. It's true. I really am. Because because now that we have that space and we, we went and saw it yesterday, it was the last office that was at that price point in the place, it's five minutes, it's five minutes from our door. It's just right over there. And we, I was like, we'll take it. And I put it on my credit card. I was like, security deposit office, yes. And I, I, I put a bunch of my quilt books over in, um, a, in a suitcase and I dragged the suitcase over there yesterday and I started setting up my desk and I am so happy. So I'm gonna be able to stream from a place that is not my living room. I mean, I don't have to stay, I don't have to be, I don't have to be in the, I don't have to scan, oh, it's open. Look at this, look at this, you see this? You see this ironing board? Do you, see, hey, Alasala, it's the first time chat. Alasala, I'm so glad you're here. I gotta go back and catch everybody and say hi. Welcome, I'm so glad you're in the chat. This is great. Quilt Nerd is really fun. And all those welcome baskets, they're for you. Anyway, the scanner is is in there. You know, you know. So <clears throat> I just kind of like pulling the green screen down, especially today, because it looks like, doesn't it look like crayons? It looks like crayons. Okay, <laughs> so, so anyway. Um, <laughs> It's exciting and part of the, yeah, like I said, part of the reason I was like really kind of like stress level high was the printer didn't work and I just know how good it's gonna be when I'm not stepping over gym bags and irons. You know what I'm saying? I'm grateful, period, but uh, good good days are ahead. Oh, I'm so excited. So that's great, that's great news. Um, so, hey to Pem. I had a burrito the other day, by the way. Um, Padma and, uh, okay, great. Yeah, oh yeah, got, got a few things to, to, to show you and talk to you about. Um, scrap quilts are the best. Jupiter's Nest, hey Jupiter, it's great to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Um, and Word and Bird Nerd and Christine and Quilty Mouse. Yeah, with the sweatshirt, a thousand percent, it's gonna happen. Um, and thanks, thanks Padma. Um, the quilt zone, yeah, the quilt zone. You did get it, Quilty Mouse, and it happened right away. There's always something kind of strange and wonderful that happens. My mom's here. Mom. Mom, thanks for coming. You're still up at the lake though, right? So we'll have to see how long you can stay because I know, I know the uh, internet is not great. Warden Bird Nerd and Kitty Hannah. Um, yes, we have some very good ideas for merch, including the Harriet Aardvark. I mean, there's a lot of things that are keep quilts weird, you know. So yeah, if you go to, to um, uh, Rohan's thing, you'll see, yeah, you'll see. Sorry, I'm catching up. Um, yeah, coffee mug, t-shirt, stickers, dog collar, <laughs> shot glass, you know. We have a we have a little game on, on this, uh, a little drinking game on the show. Uh, you have to keep watching, you know, to see it. We don't usually, I don't think we've done, I don't think we've done the drinking game on the midday show. I might make a rule that that doesn't happen. Oh, God day drinking. I just, I mean, some people, it's their thing. They go to brunch. It's a boozy brunch. I've done that a couple times. It's fun, but like, ugh. Um, and Penny's doing the quilty dance. It's very good. I wonder what that looks like. Um, Liz D and M Hicks and Alasala. I'm so glad you're here. This is great. Um, and so, and so I'm going to, I'm going to keep going a little bit. Dee Marie, yeah. Well, during the social, I might still do, well, yeah, I can't do the Sunday social show over there, really. Hey, Susan Michael. No, I did not see the Google illustration today. Very interesting. 
is it quilt related? It probably is. Or it's like Fonzie, you know. Um, Mom, I know I knew that you would like the um, the office news. I mean, I knew you would. Alice Alice says, thank you so much for the warm welcome. I watched one of your streams the other night. I love your personality, though I've never actually made a quilt. You know what? I would say, it's probably been said in the chat already, you haven't made a quilt yet. You are among some pretty awesome quilters, but not, but not in an intimidating way. I mean, there are people who are different levels of, you know, of quilt makers, you know? I'm definitely like here. My mom's really up here. Marianne Fonz is my mom. Um, Myra's new at quilt making. She's great. And by the way, Alisala and everybody, let me tell you, hey, crazy quilter. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome, welcome. Uh, it's great to catch the live show. The replays are always on YouTube eventually. <laughs> um, I put post them up on YouTube a week or so later. If you're a subscriber to the show, you can watch the, the video on demand, the recorded version um, immediately, like right away. As soon as uh, the show ends, it's on Twitch, on my Twitch channel and you can watch it immediately. Um, and uh, so, so you should subscribe if you can. Um, and it's free, actually, if you use your Amazon Prime membership. You go in there and the mods can maybe direct you to how to do that. Um, and you get a free Twitch subscription every month. But the thing is about the Amazon Prime subscription, uh, so you subscribe to this show, I recommend that, uh, you have to do it every month. And make sure to do that, just set a little timer on your phone or make a note. Uh, it's kind of a pain, I wish we didn't have to do that, but it's free, so it's like, okay. Um, but make sure you're re-upping, because my friend Jonathan didn't know he had to do that, and so he didn't have a subscription. And then once we get to 200 subscribers, we're gonna do this giveaway for a quilt. And I've talked about it on the last few shows. I'm not gonna talk about it today, but I'll talk about it tomorrow, because we have an extra show tomorrow. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. Legit indeed. Legit indeed. An office. Um, Betsy Dragonfly, it's so good to see you. You know what, people I haven't seen in a minute are here, it's so great. And Bib and everybody. Okay, so, if I haven't said, Kenny's here, Kenny's here. Um, so we are, I'm gonna get going a little bit here, but if I haven't said hi to you, I certainly will. And you don't have to be in the chat, you can lurk. Lurkers are totally cool, I lurk, I lurk in a few live streams I watch. I'm a little intimidated sometimes about chatting but don't you shouldn't have you don't have to worry about that here i don't play favorites There's just people who have been here from the beginning who i like you know you know i recognize them you know we're like oh i gotta get small hang on um the other thing about the office that's gonna be great is that my green screen will work better because i'm in this room and there's light sources that i can't really control from like the windows in the other room so i mean there's just so much stuff that's gonna happen. And now Eric's here, and so he's gonna help with some things too. And he wants to start a stream, so that's gonna be exciting. Um, on Twitch. So let me see, what was I, oh yeah. So what you're looking at on your screen, um, less, less than a week, uh, to get me um, a picture of what you've been working on. And Ala Sala, if you're not a quilt maker yet, this would be a really good show for you to see, actually. And, and you may, you never have to make a quilt. Don't worry about it. You know, that's like not a thing. We have people who watch this show, really. Like there's like at least, I mean, I don't know all of them, but like there's at least 10 people who have dropped by this show more than a few times who are not quilt makers, who just dig the content, man, because we look at really beautiful things on this show. We look at art, we look at fashion, we look at history, we look at beautiful quilts of all kinds, those made in the 1800s, those made in the 1700s, those made today, those made, those, and those that are in process. And that's something that I think you might, you might really like because it's fun. So uh, on Tuesday night, uh, part of the show will be the Quilt Nerds on Parade show. And so anybody who wants, you don't have to be a subscriber to do this, just send me pictures of what you're working on, or maybe a quilt that you bought. You know, some people buy quilts, they collect quilts. We're gonna talk about two famous quilt collectors today, the Kovals. Mom, no, Mom, you know the Kovals. Hey, City Mac. Um, and uh, let's see, and so and so, send me pictures to the email that I use for this show, twitch at maryfonts.com, and, and I'm gonna celebrate you. Give me a little description about what, about what you're working on. You can also send me a picture of a book that you have loved, a quilt-related, you know, text, maybe one of the used books that you found through this show. Um, and, uh, and, and tell, tell us, tell me why you like it. And then we'll go through all of those things and celebrate you all because you're pretty great. 
uh, and you make cool stuff, and you read cool stuff, and it's a community, you know? Uh, I'm excited about my sweatshirt being uh, here. I left it in London. Eric brought it home. Small, small thing. Okay, so we start every show uh, with... I'll talk about the thimbles in just a minute, but we'll talk. Uh, uh, we start every show with a quilt, a different quilt or a different image sometimes behind me, and it's a good way for people who are new to just kind of see like, what is this show like? What is it about? And um, and it's really just, I mean, it just kicks us off in this way. Uh, to, I mean, because we got to start somewhere, right? Now, Susan or Michael, I'm glad you're here because um, Dee Marie censored? Is Dee Marie censored? What, is, what did Dee Marie say? Oh, okay. Silk long underwear from Land's End is my go-to on 32 degree days. Silk long underwear of any kind is gonna work for me and has worked. Um, but it's not 32 where you are, is it? Is it? Anyway, so Susan or Michael, um, I keep thinking about you and your suggestion to do a quilt mural show. Of course, of course, there's so many wonderful quilt murals out there. Um, so today we're going to look at one, but it is, it's worthy of several shows because there are, I mean, there are amazing murals all over the country and Quilt Folk has photographed a number of them because in pretty much every city we've visited, uh, and Quilt Folk, if you don't know, is a, a quarterly magazine. I was editor in chief for many years. Can you say many years? I don't know. Almost five years. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Five years. And, um, writing for the magazine for longer than that. And um, I, we travel around the country and the magazine, quiltfolk.com, it's amazing. There's no ads in that magazine. It's stories of people and their quilts. Anyway, wherever we go, whatever city we would go to, we would always check to see if there were murals. And a lot of times we would find them. And so we could do a couple shows on quilt murals. But I will get that in the mix, Susan, because as I was looking for an intro quilt today, I thought, you know, to put a mural back there and I thought of you. So this is a detail shot of, um, okay, I'm glad it's a little warmer. Hey, M. Sue John, it's great to see you. Um, this is a, a mural that is in Dallas, Texas, and you're looking at a detail shot. I'm going to show you the full thing, but I just love, sh you know, scrolling through this, this detail because, the, I mean, it's such a great picture. Those bricks, you know, the texture. Let me read to you who made this. Um, this. This was painted by Esther Hun, and Esther is a freelance photographer currently based in North Dallas, Texas. Esther spent several years working with other product photographers in the corporate field in different studios, such as Nina Marcus, Amazon, Wisteria, The Apparel Group Limited. Hey, little bird. Um, her work has been published. Look at this. So this is the full... It's great, isn't it? Wow. Hmm, I don't know what building it's on. I don't know that we, I don't know that it says. Well, no, because this is the about, from her about page. Um, but, but I mean, so, but it's in, it's in, uh, uh, da, 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 actually, it's in, oh, it's called Deep Ellum, the Deep Ellum mural. Uh, and Well, it's in Dallas. I don't know exactly where in Dallas, but. Um, so her work has been published, Esther Hun's work has been published in Afar.com, D Magazine, Modern Luxury, 360 West, several others. Being a big advocate for small businesses across the country, Esther has helped many clients reach big box retailers and well-known websites through crisp product imagery and strong product styling. Her images have been shown across the media spectrum recently, aw, including the Kelly Clarkson show, Goop.com, wow, she's big time. Anthropology, Oprah's favorite things, Forbes, Real Simple, and Sephora. So, Esther Hun, you are approved by the Quilt Nerd Show as well. I just think, I just think maybe you should make some room in your About Me page for Quilt Nerd. I think maybe you should take over off. You have to do edits, Esther. You have to make choices. Forbes, Sephora, everybody knows about that. Everybody knows Forbes and Sephora. But do they know us? Do your, do your clients know us? I don't think so. But they should. They should. They should. Won't they? <laughs> Please. 
Um, so, so that's really neat, huh? Isn't that great? Um, Padma says, speaking of running hot and cold, I have a funny story. Uh, I have a funny story. My grandparents had an electric blanket with dual controls. Oh, wow. My grandmother kept turning hers up and my grandfather kept turning his down. Turns out they had their controls switched. Oh, and that is really sweet. That is really sweet. I mean, I don't know what, I don't know. I think, I think, what is, I mean, I need, well, that's not, though, that's not right. That's not the right sound. I was thinking, Marianne, Marianne, we have my mom, Marianne, and we have Marianne Tea Cake from the UK. Marianne, I love a barn quilt, now that's true. Um, uh, and barn quilts are a different kind of um, quilt mural in a way. Uh, we should do a barn quilt show as well. Eat your coat, it's good to see you. Um, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, barn quilts are quilt blocks that are painted on on barns all across the country. There are barn quilt trails that you can you can visit if you're going on a road trip. I genuinely you know encourage you to Google barn quilt trail. You know if you're going to oh I don't know Ohio, Indiana, but everywhere Connecticut, Louisiana, I believe. I mean everybody's got these barn quilt trails, and uh, in in New England they're really good, and they're just beautiful quilt blocks on barns. Some of them really old and falling down these barns, which makes it a very beautiful. Kind of scene. Um, LaGrange, Texas has a great quilt museum. That's right. There's a mural on their building. Is that the, that's the Texas Quilt Museum, right? I think it is. All right, so I have one more little, little fun thing for you, and then uh, the main event. I have two sort of chapters for you today. One is um, the work of Penny Sisto, who we didn't get to last time, because how amazing was that show with on um, the Helen Fleenor quilts? Anybody who subscribes who hasn't seen that show yet, the one on Saturday night, yeah. Uh, if you subscribe, watch the watch the video on demand on my Twitch channel from the last show. Um, wow, Mary Kay Waldvogel was in the chat hanging out. Hey, Days Haas, um, how is Days Haas? She was in the chat and told us amazing stuff about this ext extraordinary quilt maker, artist, genius. Uh, Ma Maverick woman named Helen Fleenor who made 26 quilts, I think Mary Kay said. And anyway, watch the show. They're like no other. And this woman had this horrible life, terrible life, hard life, and, and was illiterate. She was illiterate, but words are on her quilts. All of these words and, you know, Bible verses and sayings. It's crazy. And if you, you know, the, watching Quilt Nerd is always free live, but um, if you aren't a subscriber, just hang in there check my youtube channel and that that will be up you know within the next week or so so check it out okay episode 110 so this i just want to show you this i came across it when i come across cool stuff i gotta share hey a nun maker it's great to see you um great quilt trail on the gulf coast of florida love it love it it was tuesday night sorry sorry <laughs> this is thursday this today is thursday it was the tuesday night show so this is a you know minimalist quilt it looks like it's definitely quilted we can kind of see on the sides and then there's this sort of you know sort of moroccan what's the word i want for that what is what is this hey herb slops herb slops thanks for subscribing i appreciate you you'll be entered into the drawing to win a quilt i mean it's a really cool quilt for a really good cause not the cause of subscriptions for twit for quilt nerd but uh, for kids in Nepal to go to school. It's pretty awesome. Um, I'll talk about it again on Saturday, or tomorrow night, the Friday night stream, if you want to know more about it. And I'll talk about it again until we get to 200 subscribers. It could happen quickly uh, that someone gets the prize. Okay, so what is this quilt? Well, it's not a quilt at all. It's a scarf. It's a scarf, and it is called the Quilt Wrap. Well, yeah, okay, so it's a wrap. It's a scarf. It's it's very fancy. It's very fancy. Um, yeah, welcome baskets are in the, ch in the chat for you, Herb Slops. We have a pretty cool group here. I mean, you can be a quilt nerd, but you don't have to be. But I really appreciate your subscription. It's very encouraging to me when people subscribe to the show. Uh, and one day, if there's enough, you know, might pay for the office. <laughs> it's, it, you know what? That's the goal for the show. I want, like, thousands of people watching Quilt Nerd. I really do. Pe 
live streams on Twitch, some of them, you know, 3,000 people watching, you know, it's totally possible. Um, and there's a lot of quilt makers out there. And so the more people who know about this show, the more people I think are going to try it out and really like it. I just don't know how to get people to know about it. Instagram is the only place I post about this show, and it's not enough. I mean, I, I don't know. So that's that's a big part of the next phase of, of this show is like how, how do I get the word out? We'll see, you know? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of great people. So this this scarf is by Jane Carr. Uh, it's it's available at Jane Carr's website. Jane Carr. Let's read about Jane Carr. Uh, Jane Carr is you know a fancy designer. She uh, established her thing in London in 2005. So she's in my former city of, of residence, cashmere in directional color palettes. You know she's she's just really fancy. I'm sure you can buy her things uh, in fancy places. She's become a coveted cult label, but I just thought that was kind of cool. Uh, indul indulgent cashmere wraps, and this one is uh, called the quilt quilt wrap. Okay, uh, and it did say a Mother's Day gift, didn't it, on that website? Well, those aren't my mom's colors, but maybe there's other colors. All right, so now for something completely different. We're starting out with an art quilter, an art quilter who makes some pretty interesting things. Now, if you are new around here. Um, oh, Padma, that's a great idea. In fact, so quilt nerd, um, <laughs> quilt nerd postcards and flyers and all this kind of stuff. I talked about that very thing with Rohan, the designer of the upcoming quilt nerd logo yesterday, because he was like, what are you going to use the logo for? And I was like, merch. And he's like, awesome. He's like cups, tote bags, clothes. I was like, oh yeah. And I said planners, because we're all very nerdy and we like to use planners. And mom, mom, are you still here? I hope your your uh, your internet is still working, because some people will remember, including you, will remember the quilt engagement calendar. Well, a quilt nerd yearly planner with amazing quilt images in in it, a beautiful you know, glossy planner. That's that's on the table. I mean, that's one of the first things I actually want to make. And so, but Rohan asked about print material and, and I said, yes, flyers and like promotional things. So, okay. So yes, yeah, so let's, let's get to this. This is incredible. And today, like, all, like every show, I really like to switch it up to do content that is dynamic. And so we're looking at this art quilter and then we're gonna look at the amazing traditional quilts, some of them collected by Mary and Joe Koval. And so, you know, if this isn't your jam, just wait. And if this is your jam and the other thing is your jam, just wait. So this is a quilt made by Penny Sisto, S-I-S-T-O. And there is an exhibit of her work uh, right now. It's It opened February 3rd and it goes through April 9th this year. So there's a few weeks. It's in Albany, Indiana and it's at the Carnegie Center for Art and History in Albany, Indiana. And the exhibit is Penny Sisto at 80, okay? So she's 80 now, this artist. Hey, eat your coat. Um, and, oh, postcards, that's pretty. Yes, the old lady has doilies in her hair. I mean, look at this, and look at this embellishment. So the, so the woman who made this, now I, I can't say that she made this recently, but this is one of the, and, and that was what was really frustrating, you guys. I, I, I found names for some of the quilts that I'll show you, but dates, uh, even in some of the articles about her and, and in the, the thing about the show, there weren't dates on any of these quilts, and I don't have a book about her, um, and so I couldn't put dates on them, and I apologize, I like to do that. But, um, but she's 80 years old, and so these are works from her from her life. So the Carnegie Center for Art uh, and History is pleased to present Penny Sisto at 80, an exhibition of recent works by the venerated New Albany artist, fiber artist. This will be the 80-year-old Sisto's eighth exhibition at CCAH. The works seen here reveal a return of the artist's focus to well-loved subjects from her decades-long career as an artist and midwife, powerful women, mothers with children, 
goddesses and other spiritual figures assembled from scraps of fabric adorned with her signature like diamond sorry her signature diamond like sewn details screenshot worthy i'm blown away oh this would be a great okay let me just hide myself i'm gonna hide myself unless you want me on the screenshot actually it might be a fun memento <laughs> um I, I i was watching quilt nerd when i saw this saw this quilt um but of course google penny sisto and you can find all of these images mary free so join us for our opening reception uh, with the Jamie, Jamie Abersold Jazz Quartet. That was, oh, on March 31st. You guys. The opening party, the opening reception with a jazz band or jazz quartet on March 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. In order to limit capacity on our galleries during the COVID-19 public health crisis, we're requiring attendees to register in advance. A members only reception with an artist guided tour of the exhibition will take place 5 to 6 p.m. and registration is also required. If you're in the Indiana area, Albany, Indiana, I mean, wow. And, and you're comfortable, you know, going to events like this at this point and registering and all that. I'm sure, look at this, I'm sure you have to provide proof of vaccination, all that stuff. Anyway, let me get this woman. Yeah, there's, there was no title on this. I believe this work was um, with a Van Gogh irises at the bottom. Padme, remind me of that question and I'll go back. I, I, I mean, now that I'm here on the space, it's like I can't go back, um, but we can look. Um, so, okay, uh, let me read to you about this. Okay, the Scottish born Penny Sisto has spent the past 33 years um, crazy quilter is 20, 20 minutes away. Hey, Chris. Yeah, it's incredible, right? It's so good to see you. Um, you should go. You're 20 minutes away. You should totally go. You should totally go. Uh, Scottish born Penny Sisto has spent the past 33 years making expressive quilts by some estimates about 200 per year. Whoa. Making them in a cabin in the woods bordering Mount St. Francis Monastery in Floyd's Knobs, Indiana. Recognizable in this most recent series are some of the artist's favored motifs from over the decades, from humanoid creatures with antlers, women holding children, the artist Frida Kahlo, we'll see one of those, to various religious icons, each figure appearing like a recurring dream or memory from a past artistic exploration. Oh, so on positive threads, she sees my soul, I have tears. <laughs> Hey, Natalie, you're watching during your lunch break. Pretty good lunch break. Sisto has often created and exhibited works uh, in collections addressing a singular theme, such as slavery stories, threads of strength and fortitude. And, and that uh, exhibit was mounted at this place, the, in the Carnegie Center for Arts and History in 2006. Um, she other collections address a singular scene uh, theme uh, one series depicting the violences of the holocaust the vietnam war and the aids epidemic however the work in this year's penny sisto at 80 was created without a predetermined theme in mind by the way the images that you're seeing you know this is from the the announcement about the show but these works are not necessarily in the show okay i think the first one i showed you and perhaps the last one are but just so you know this is a presentation remember not a uh, i mean this is a exploration quote nerd not a presentation we're just exploring together um okay the work in this year's penny sisto at 80 look at those i mean it's just amazing the detail and i, I love her style i love this like you know it's not cartoonish, that's not what I mean at all, but it's, it's, you know, it's interpreted. It's this very specific style. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. I wonder if those are actually beads. Maybe somebody's asking. Um, it looks like faces are painted exactly. Faith Quilts is in Mun Muncie? I don't know. I mean, I feel like looking at these in person would be really amazing. So the works at the show, by the way, those of you who might be able to make it, were made during a period of time when the artist was isolated from her nine adult children and their families due, due to COVID-19. 
the frequent smiles and maternal figures throughout the nearly 30 new works are visions oops, sorry, of a welcoming future or past. The pain that surfaced, let me get closer on this, the pain that surfaced in some of Sisto's previous collections is covert in this one. Orbs of light, halos, auras, and celestial bodies are dotted throughout the work as signifiers of protection for the artist. Quote, I feel safest in places with no corners, unquote. Sisto uh, said, who spends time each day either in her yurt, her teepee, or the rounded outdoor sauna on her rustic homestead. Yes, please. The exhibition includes intimate footage of Sisto as she moves through these spaces on a recent winter morning. Wow, there's video. I love it. I love it. And Sujan really wants to go. I know, wouldn't it be great? And you have to register, and I'm sure, you know, proof of vaccination is part of the thing, so but it's what you're comfortable with. Here's Frida. Passing through brutality into a space of healing is a way of life for Sisto, who learned mid midwifery? You say midwifery, right? Not midwifery. Is that true? Marianne, I feel like you would know. Not because you're a midwife, but just, well, all of you will know. Um, probably, but midwifery, I think. Anyway, uh, she learned it from her grandfather, in their remote village in the Orkney Islands in Scotland. He was the town healer. Oh my, oh my God. But also a ruthless abuser. As she told Louisville Magazine in 2020. Oh my God. She told Louisville Magazine in 2020 he turned family tree branches into circles. I don't know exactly what that means, but it comes after he's described as a ruthless abuser. And by the way, I don't want to play the Twilight Zone music because this is a somber moment, but we just looked at a woman, the woman's quilts, you know, Helen Fleenor's quilts on the last show, who also came from a family of abuse. <laughs> I mean... When you watch the show, I'm, I, and, and like, does it matter that we have these weird coincidences? I, I, I don't know, we, but they happen every single show. There's something really interesting. I think it's very cool. Anyway, it's just a similarity. We've never had quilts that were described as being made by people who came from these difficult, you know, paths in a specific way, and here's two in a row. It's just interesting. Back to the art, back to the piece about the show that's going on right now in New Albany, Indiana. By her count, she has helped birth 2,500 babies naturally from her own daughter's children, residents of a California commune in the 1970s, and women in Maasai tribal villages in rural East Africa, where she learned beading and collage methods that informed aspects of her art practice. The artist's field, oh sorry, the artist's first quilt, stitched when she was a child, in 1948, uh, she did with household materials. She sewed it with household materials and it's displayed right now along 30 of Sisto's newest works. And remember, we read earlier that she makes like 200 quilts a day. <laughs> I mean, sorry, 200 quilts a year, 200 quilts a year. Um, in Penny Sisto at 80, the circles that form the number eight, I showed you the sign, the logo for the show earlier, um, the circles form the number eight and remind us that aging, along with the passage of time, is not a straight line from beginning to end. A deeply spiritual number in many of the world's religious, uh, in the world's religions, the number eight looks like an hourglass upright, but viewed sideways, it's a symbol of perpetuity and opportunity for rebirth. Oh wow, dazed Haas. I wonder if the monkey is a symbol of Frida's miscarriages and abortions. Wow, yeah, maybe so. Amazing, okay, Miss Eleni, I said it right, midwifery. Um, <laughs> dazed Haas. Somehow Frida and monkey look like Madonna and child. Totally, totally. Yes, hey Prairie Susie. Being abused is about a lack of control. Quilting is a form of control. That's a profound statement, absolutely true, yeah.
by the way, we read earlier, right, about this, the diamond, you know, embellishment and stuff. Um, yes, assembled from scraps of fabric, her work is uh, adorned with her signature diamond-like sewn details. Interesting. I, I mean, I don't have a name on this, y'all. It, it, I mean, it just, they weren't anywhere. <clears throat> I, I mean, you know I don't like that. <coughs> Pardon me. So I've got a little bit more here about Penny and more images too. Um, in all the quilts, the eyes are amazing, says Faith. Yes. Yeah, and, and Quilty, wants to, Quilty Mouse wants to know how to make those eyes. Let's go back to these eyes, actually. Wow, yeah, oh my god. With the, with the sequins, you know? Yeah, they're sequins, I think. That's just magical. Isn't it wonderful? Wow. So here's more about Penny Sisto. This is on her About Me page on her website, which is pennysisto.com. Um, hang on. Um, she didn't write the piece. This is from News and Tribune. I think the Indiana, an Indiana paper, News and Tribune. Okay. Is it le leather hanging off the desk? Ask asks Miss Eleni. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, and I think some of these. Yeah, we're on her website, and there's no. I think that, yeah, because I obviously went to her website to find things. Leather. Yes, I think it is leather or suede. Yeah, totally. Okay, Penny Sisto about me from the News and Tribune article. Wait a minute, sorry. <laughs> sorry, and that's like sisal rug on the bottom? Doesn't it look like that? Or, or maybe it's, you know, carpet or something? Really interesting. Okay. It might be her home, so this is the article, it might be her home, a log cabin tucked in the woods. Perhaps it's her soft Scottish accent that rises and falls like a sea, this is Mother Teresa, um, rises and falls like the sea near the island where she grew up. Uh, it might even be the way she finds detailed human faces in scraps of felt and dyed cloth taken from, what else, a hideaway she calls the magic drawer. <laughs> awesome. Look, more sequins in the eyes. Totally mixed media, Kenny, exactly. Sisto, an artist since seven years old and a Floyd's knob resident, turns out a couple hundred, she says, a couple hundred pieces every year and sells them to a local audience. Her work, uh, well, uh, it's beautiful, said the Reverend Rick Couts of St. Paul's Episcopal Church in New Albany. It's just wonderful work, he said. His church has hosted Sisto's work a few times in the past through uh, past two years. Um, the working name for Sisto's art is quilt, but her creations are a combination of pastels, pastels, okay, that makes sense, dye and cloth. The finished products are realistic masterpieces, often of women, but always alive. Sisto's creativity was born of a grim early life, and grim is in quotes, so that's her word for it. Uh, where her story seems less like a fantasy novel and more like a Greek tragedy. <sighs> Quote, I think because the atmosphere at home was so destructive to create something, I needed to create something beautiful each day. Unquote. Sisto's family had lived on the Orkney Islands in, southern, in northern Scotland for hundreds of years when Sisto's teenage mother gave birth to her and left the area soon afterward. Sisto's grandmother raised her but didn't have much use for another mouth to feed. Sisto said, quote, I loved her very much, but she was a very hard woman. I carry a lot of scars, but I would choose it again because it taught me so many beautiful things, she said, of the important lessons that she learned. She continues, the greatest of those lessons was to be totally self-sufficient, unquote. Being self-sufficient for Sisto means not going hungry or growing lonely. It means holding witness to everyday miracles. In the 1960s, the early 1960s, Sisto, then a well-practiced midwife, traveled to Africa to help Maasai women give birth. Uh, from there, she moved to California with her first husband and lived at a commune 
a still standing Ananda village. Uh, she said jokingly, quote, so I came here and stayed, even though he didn't. Oh, so I came here and stayed, even though he didn't. Um, Sisto has been with her husband, Richard Sisto, a jazz musician. This one, I, this one kills me. I, it's so beautiful. Um, she's been with her husband, the jazz musician, for 35 years. They moved to Kentucky and worked on a dairy farm before moving to her current Indiana residence. By that time, only three of Sisto's 10 children lived at home. 10. I mean, <laughs> um, sorry, I'm pretty hungry. Um, Sisto, okay. Mm -hmm. By that time, only three of Sisto's children lived at home when they moved to Indiana. When Sisto arrived in Indiana, her property was nothing, she said. Nothing but frogs and trees. Today, there are still things to be done. These, I gotta go in a little bit closer on these sequin eyes. Yeah, an intense and interesting woman, says Kitty Anna. I'm feeling reverence for her and her work. And Chris Mess says she nails the eyes, brings life to the face. It's just brilliant. I know, right? Um, Today there are still things to be done on her property. Sisto said she's wait, waiting on rain to lay a stone path, but the majority of her home is completed. A backyard teepee even stretches into the sky. Sisto follows a Native American tradition. Her teepee has hosted the home births of her grandchildren and a parade of interesting animals. Birthing does and stoic birthing doves and stoic owls. Wow. Animals are not the only visitors that find themselves. Look at this piecing. This like whirl of piecing. It's so interesting. Miscellany, Ananda Village is sort of between Chico and Lake Tahoe up in the mountains. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to know. Ah! <laughs> you get two. Um, strange people come here, she said. She, uh, to her property. <laughs> she possesses a picture of Adolfo Perez Esquivel a Nobel Prize Peace winner, uh, a Nobel Peace Prize winner standing on her property. He wanted to meet me, she said proudly. She doesn't know exactly how he heard of her. His wife is an artist, she said, or maybe the monks who lived near her Kentucky farm. I bet that's who we saw. I bet that's the monk we saw. Look at this. Is it a fox, maybe? Wow. Th I think this is my favorite one, you guys. I mean, oh my God, it's so cool. Uh, okay, monks lived near her Kentucky farm. Maybe they told him about the woman in the woods. They told maybe the Adolfo Perez Esquivel, who I don't know, I don't know who that is. I feel like I, I was thinking about the Boise Peace Quilt and maybe they gave him a quilt, but somebody wants to look it up. Um, Whatever it is, people seem to be drawn in by Sisto. Well, yeah. Um, said uh, this reverend, quote, Penny, her Penny uh, gives herself when she gives a gallery talk. The spirit that comes out of her just exudes joy and life. Unquote. Pamela Matai, a Louisville-based artist who has made a national name for herself in fabric arts, has similar things to say about Sisto, who, mention who mentored Matai during her high school years. As a freshman at Presentation Academy, Matai watched Sisto, Sisto speak during a Woman in Careers Day, Careers Day event. Matai says her eyes lit up like a kid on Christmas morning when she heard a real fabric artist would be talking. When school ended, whoa! Okay, uh, Padma, OMG, she did a quilt of my guru, Baba Hari Das. I recognized it. Is this? This it says Nagami. It, which it was it? Which one, Padma? Do I have a picture of her? Yes, yes, Kitty, I do. I have at the end of the when we get to the pictures of her. That's the that's the end of the slides I have. Yes, because I was like, who is this woman? And like, yes, I had to know more. A cougar. That was a cougar. Um, you're looking at it on social media. Okay. <laughs> so Padma's looking at you're reading ahead. No, that's totally fine. You should all be like, yeah, finding more out about pa Patty Sisto, uh, uh, Penny Sisto, obviously. But that's amazing. No, that's great. That's great. She did a quilt of your guru, Bobby, Baba Hari Das. 
Amazing. Okay, okay, yeah. Pictures under the I IG tags have amazing detail. Awesome. From the, okay, okay, that's great. I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna put that tag in the chat. Somebody might have already done that, but but there's pictures of the um, her work in the Carnegie uh, Museum of Art and History, and that's the IG tag in the chat. Um, okay, okay, so, sorry, sorry. Uh, just a few more here. Um, when school ended, and this gal who's talking about Penny says, uh, she's saying, when school ended and Matai returned home, she told her parents what her future held for her. I want to be a fabric artist, she said. Now Matai owns her own business, Dye Signs by Pamela. It's Dye Signs by Pamela. And her last name is Matai. Matai. Um, she hasn't forgotten her beginnings, she says, quote, no interview or story about my journey as an artist is complete until I talk about the impact Penny had, has had on my career, she said in an email, quote. Sisto has her limits, of course, at least that's what she says, but she's also, she also acknowledges her abilities. She says, quote, I'm a bad artist. I have no education. I'm a bad sewer. Yet the one talent I have is to put down in fabric something that makes you able to feel how I felt when I made it. And that's magic. And let's see, is this, oh, oh gosh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, there's one more and then pictures of her. Do I have, yeah, I have one more. There was a face quilted in the dress. Amazing. And someone said the, the last one, her, her dress, was, the woman's dress was made with flower sacks, right? I mean, the hand dye, like, appreciating the dyed cloth behind this figure, like, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, the stars, she hand dyed the stars in there and then accentuated them with the quilting. It's amazing. So cool. And is that velvet? It looks like velvet, doesn't it, in the dress? There's a film about her? Word and Bernard, how long is it? Should we watch it? I mean, if it's like 20, I mean, I don't know. Well, I can't go too late, you guys, because I have a doctor's appointment at 1.30. So I have to go by like 10 after one. So, I mean, we can watch it. If it's, you know, if it's 10 minutes, we'll definitely watch it. 57 minutes. Well, I'm going to make a note of it. I mean, we'll watch it. Penny, Sisto. Well, look, you know what? You know what I'm going to do? So actually, it's very interesting. So here, let's take a vote. Because you guys are into this. Oh, let me show you. Let me show you her. That's Penny. And this is from the latest. Um, this is from the announcement about the show. I mean, do you, do you, hey, Ivana, do you want to watch the film? Or do you want to talk about the Col Mary and Joe Koval quilt collection? Um, put a one, and now, and that content will be there for you. I mean, It'll, it'll come, you know, Saturday, whatever. It's completely different from this. So either that's good or it's less good. Put a one in the chat if you want to watch the film. And put a two in the chat if you want to look at the very traditional um, quilts of the Kobolds. You're into it? Both? Yeah. So one in the chat if you want to watch the film. And a two in the chat if you want to move on to traditional quilts. By the way, I love this. Do you see this Wonder Woman? It says, this is a job for... Crap, I'm not wearing my costume <laughs> with her bra. I'm seeing ones in the chat so far. I'm seeing, oh, I love that, you guys. I love it. I'm into it. Warden Bird Nerd wants to move right now. Okay, to yes to film another day. Okay, I think. You got if you want it, you gotta vote. If you if you're you gotta do the thing. And then this is the last picture I have of her. Penny Sisto. Bonnie says too, but she's good with either. You guys, I think we're gonna watch the film. I think the ones have it. Want, Chris wants to watch it, Quilty Mouse. You know, it's, you know what I have to say, I'm gonna vote one too. And the reason is, I wanna show you something and, and I don't wanna throw shade, okay? I don't wanna throw shade, but I do wanna tell you why I think watching the film is a good idea. This is why. So, 
this book, piece by piece, is great. The content is great, but it's really challenging. The graphic design is really, it's, it's translated from French. And so you've got the French on one side, but the fonts and the, I mean, I would be okay having a little more time to like organize this, this thing because the quilts are amazing. But I mean, do you see how many fonts are on this? I mean, I count one, two, three, you know, four, it, it, it's tough. So let's, let's do it. Let's do the, let's do the film. If you, if you want it, you gotta vote. Let's do it. Let's do it. And that'll be, that'll, I think it's, I think it's great. Okay. And if you, if you want to dip out, or maybe you're just going to be like very uh, taken with this, <laughs> watch if we, we can't actually watch it. Okay. Hang on, hang on. Let me get, let me get this small. And you know, um, this show is great to just kind of have on, you know, I love having a live stream on just kind of, yeah. Hey, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Woman of the Cloth, fabric artist Penny Sisto. That's what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. Let me, if, yeah, if, I hope we can actually watch it. Oh no! <laughs> the film does not appear on Just Watch. You see, the fates. The fates have told us what to do. Well, I'll get it. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. And <laughs> if the other one's too much, go with this one. You know, people want to see it. Let me just, let me just try something else. Because I will get this film and we will watch it. Um, let me just see if I can find it on YouTube. Or something else about her. Something else about her. That'd be fun. Um... Well, there's totally stuff about her. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Oh, here's, there's a Q and A. Six days ago, there's a Q and A. There's a Q and A and it's 50 minutes, but we'll watch as much of it as we wanna watch. We're, oh, this is great. This is really great. Okay, 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 okay. Let's go, let's do this. I gotta stay on the screen because we don't wanna get any. Uh... Oh, Word and Bernard, welcome to my life. You jumped ahead and didn't read further before you said something. This is literally the story of my life. Okay, let's check this out. And I thought, there's no way to capture this woman either in written word or uh, photography. The lilt of her voice, the cadence, uh, she, I thought it has to be film. And I said, well, that needs to be done. And I thought as a writer that I would go back and do some write, write some grants and raise the money wow. to hire someone who knew what they were doing. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get anybody to be an underwriter for it. Oh, no. And so uh, by default, I ended up uh, becoming a, a, a filmmaker, uh, even though I was not trained in it. The only ability that I had, the only thing of special talent was that I was willing to work for free. So that made me uh, so, the filmmaker. So this I is I'm going to go ahead and ask um, That's the woman who made the film then. Difficult to hear for you, Miscellany? Okay. Okay. A question from Kathleen who put a question into the chat and this question is for Penny. Yeah. Um how has your working changed over the past 25 years? That better? Your work process. And in parentheses, she says, I see you now have a long arm quilt machine. <laughs> yes, indeed I do. It was the first big purchase of this lifetime. And um, I think I work faster now. And I think I work cleaner, believe it or not, than I used to. She is I, sweet. I miss the fire that I had back then, but I welcome, oh. especially since my old. Sorry, closed captions, great idea. The 
leaving hands are so crippled up. I welcome the skill that I've developed in manipulating a needle through um, fingers that really have no business holding needles anymore. And can I add something to that? Um, I have seen ex exhibitions of her work over in Owensboro, Kentucky. So even though Penny and I had not seen each other for 20 years until tonight, um, I've been following her work and I noticed several things which we were talking about earlier as we were walking through. Um, I think one of the first things that changed was when she got the quilting machine. She had broken your wrist. Remember yes. you were hanging an yeah. exhibit and you yeah. fell. Mm. Uh, so that was, that has added a whole different dimension in her work when it has all, the quilting is as much a part of the beauty of her pieces now as is the images. So I think uh, that. Quick question. I missed it when I was doing like sound stuff. Is when did she get the long arm? Is that really recently that she did? They might not have said, but it seems like it was new. She, I did hear her say it's the, the most expensive thing she's ever purchased. Um, when was the film made? I, well, this, Padma, this is, okay, Dee Marie. Yeah, okay, so not like yesterday. She didn't get her long arm like yesterday, but she was making quilts a long time before she did. Um, Padma, this film was made recently because this is the Q and A with the filmmaker. This was done six days ago for this exhibit. I mean, on the occasion, I think of this exhibit, and I, I'll find. I'll, in fact, while we're watching this, I'm gonna poke around and see um, where I can find the film or where, if I can get the film. That was a big change, and then she started dyeing her own fabrics, and when she didn't have to depend on Goodwill stores for her, <laughs> that really, and now she can afford not just the dyed fabrics that she makes for the faces and the limbs, beautiful fabrics for the background and the clothes and uh, astoundingly beautiful, rich colors. Uh, and then the last time I saw mm. an exhibit of yours was over in Owensboro again. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, at that point, I noticed that she was using um, some paints, fabric paints, and markers and uh, also underneath the pieces there was often an outline of either brown or black felt mm -hmm. and just that little tiny piece on the outside edges gave a dimensionality to them mm -hmm. that the earlier pieces didn't have mm -hmm. so uh, i think that that evolution of her process has made her pieces just outstandingly beautiful if you just joined us, we're watching this um, talk with Penny Sisto, this artist, and they're not showing her work in this interview, which it's a Zoom, and so that's a little harder, but um, encourage you to go to, um, to this um, IG account to see some of her, um, whoops, to see some of her work that's at this museum right now, and just Google Penny Sisto, and you'll see because we I showed a bunch of her work before, which is why we want to watch this, but they're not showing it here. So, okay. uh, I thought they were beautiful 25 years ago, and now they're whew, way off. She's 80. She's 80. Okay, I would like to relay um, actually two questions from two different from two different viewers that I think are similar enough that I could join them together, maybe. Um, this question from Cynthia is, wow, is Bonnie. Penny, and the question is, how did you learn to be so very open in talking about your work and your work in progress, which is usually such a personal process? And then I'll tap, tap on, tap onto that from Sarah Collins. She says, what does Penny think about looking back at herself in this video and work? Great question. And I tied those two together because I think that in looking back on yourself in this video, of course, you're looking back at yourself talking and being very open about your work. So what do you think about that, Penny? Well, I'll start with the openness because I think that's where everything starts. When I was three, I was first 
um, great, no polite word for it, sorry, little kids listening. Um, and I decided there were two ways of dealing with that. One was to hide it, and the other was to use it, and perhaps in the openness, prevent it happening to another three-year-old. I don't know how logically that works, but I do know that when we are open about things and when we share the pain and the growth we accrued through experience, it benefits everyone. Um, and I said, even at three, no more secrets. And, and what uh, what is it like looking back at yourself and watching this video in which you're talking about um, such sensitive subjects? We're talking about anything at all from 25 years ago. When I look back this evening seeing that, um, and it's the first time yeah, I have too. looked back at her or she or me, <laughs> um, she reminds me of my daughters and I, i'm at an age of some of my daughters and almost soon will be one of my granddaughters and i think given all that happened to her yeah. me um she in her woundedness gives me as an old woman strength to go on Thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share a couple other questions in the meantime. Jean Park says, how many ideas do you have in your head waiting to be quilted at one time? Do you work on multiple quilts at one time? Um, yes and yes, yes. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning, even before I say my first morning prayer within my chest area is an image will pop up and I will say ah that's where I'll start today and I go first of all to the studio and make a quick mark on a piece of fabric so that I won't forget and then I take the morning prayer to the teepee mm -hmm. and um, that's my morning routine usually mm -hmm. about 4 four thirty. <laughs> there is a. I, I um, felt like that was yeah. another question that, in some ways, I think might relate to that. Actually, Chelsea says, "Do you protect yourself in spirit and in psychological ways when working with difficult life subjects, uh, like the ones we talked about and the ones in the film, rape, violence, HIV, AIDS?" And if so, how do you do this? And um, perhaps what you just mentioned, Penny, about your morning prayer is a form of protection, but do you have any other thoughts on how to protect yourself as you are not just going through the, the day, but also when you are working with such um, deeply emotional subject matter? It is your, a great question. Heart? Yeah. Yes, because my belief is that the more open you are within yourself, to yourself, the safer you are, and the more wow. protection. Um, it's as if I gifted myself a best friend. Sorry, uh, I want to hear that. The more open you are within yourself, to yourself, the safer you are, and the more protection. Um, it's as if I gifted myself a best friend. And um, a protector. And I found that when I spoke out more my own truths, interesting, Bonnie. Yeah. I could also, in doing that, in some tiny way, help other women and protect other women and other girls. That sound is on their side, that like person talking. And we wish they would not do that. I know. I'm a big mouth. <laughs> 
I don't know about that, but anyway. <laughs> I think she said I'm a big mom. Um, I'm a big mom. I would like to ask another question to Caroline. Um, Caroline, it's been 25 years since you made this film. Oh, um, okay. The film is 25 years old. We did not know that. The exhibit and this interview, very new, happening right now. This is six days old, but... The film that Carolyn Nellis made that I am getting information about right now is was is 25 years ago she made it. A quarter century. And I'm wondering, yeah. when you watched it tonight, um, okay. what, what surprised you the most about this film? Was there something that you watched that surprised you that thought, oh gosh, either maybe something you remembered or maybe misremembered? Actually, I think the thing that most surprised me was that I haven't seen it for a while, and I assumed because I made it as a um, totally novice filmmaker, I thought after 25 years, I probably wouldn't like it, hmm. and I still felt moved by it. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, which I thought was interesting. That's and awesome. I think I was exactly right when I was sitting in that cabin room with Barb and Penny and thinking this woman has so much to say that it needs to be heard mm -hmm. on a larger audience and I especially think the parts about the sexual abuse when this was uh, going around the country on different PBS stations at different times mm -hmm. People would call me afterwards because there, there was a uh, phone number where they could buy a, a copy if they wanted to. And I would say probably it's probably 90% of the people who called for a copy and wanted to talk about it were sexual abuse victims wow. themselves. Wow. And, and this was so far before the Me Too movement. Mm -hmm. They had not seen anything on TV or, you know, that actually spoke to their reality. And a lot of them were sexually abused as children. They were so got, uh, I would almost feel like crying at the end of some of those phone conversations because Penny had spoken so much to their hearts and maybe gave them an outlet that was they were living under a secret mm -hmm. and she was right. one of the first people that opened the door and let them realize it didn't have to be a secret you were still a good human being no matter what happened to you as a child and you know that's so much to hold you know like for a penny it's so i mean that's it's like her openness to herself is to me just one part of it sincerely i mean to have people come to you with pain like that, I mean, that makes me want to cry because it's like, it's this tidal wave of pain that that would come to her, right? And you would have to, I mean, just everything she does makes perfect sense, you know? Like the time in the morning and the, the yurt, you know, the teepee that she goes to, to, to get strong because it's just so much. It's just so much. I'm a big fan of Tori Amos, you know, and she started the the Rain Network, the Rape Abuse Incest National Network, and I mean, people because she had that experience in her life of rape, and she 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 was the same thing, you know. She gets off a concert stage, and people tell her what happened to them, and and she does the same kind of spiritual practice where she, you know, she has to manage that somehow. And anyway, she's talking uh, about that and. I felt like the movie was worthwhile having done that just for the number of people who got that experience of being cleansed of something that was a stain upon their souls. So um, I'm glad that we made the movie. At the time, sometimes I, it was very hard to do because I was a totally inexperienced filmmaker. Hmm. I will tell you that a lot of the quality of this film belongs to someone else who's on, I saw he and his wife in one of those little gallery screens. Calvin Kimbrough was the videographer and the sound recorder. He was the whole tech team for this. 
and his wife Nelia is an artist in her own right so he really appreciates women artists and um, I, his work was phenomenal as far as I'm concerned I love I guess if you ask me something that surprised me I guess I had forgotten how well he did like when she was talking about the eyes and how she does them first and gets that little spark of light in the in, in yes the yes the person's eye and he had zeroed in close up right of her eyes cool. showing that little white light in there and several times throughout like she was talking about making the hands he has he's right there on her hands making the hands mm. um i just think calvin did a tremendously good job uh so Calvin, I, I, I'm, I think you're still out there watching. Yeah. <laughs> Both Penny and I send our thanks for your beautiful work. Yeah, and if I if I may follow up to that question, uh, which first of all, thank yeah, thank you, Calvin, for being here. Um, but Caroline, um, the choice to as a director to linger for. Um, such extended periods of time on the hands of Penny making in her um, studio is kind of, to me, it was unlike anything that I am really used to seeing in in videos about artists. Um, when you gave so much time and space to her in that studio, it was almost like we were getting our chance to be inside Penny's head as she is in the act of creating. Mm. Um, and so um, I, don't, I don't know if that's a question or not, but maybe it's a comment, but I'm just, I'm kind of interested in that choice that you made. It, it was Calvin who was just, he has such an artistic eye himself and he made several previous documentaries of his own about uh, artists he he handled all the choices on what to film and it was only what you know if i had anything of value to do in this it was in the editing process and leaving you know dedicating a large amount of the film to that process but calvin also helped me in that editing process after i had done the rough edit on it I showed it to about five of my friends to see, get their their input. And Calvin and one other person both made the same comment. And in the original edit, I had you doing your artwork later in the sequence. Mm. I had some of your memories mm. up closer to the front. <laughs> and both uh, Calvin and my late friend Carl, they both said, that's the strongest part of the whole thing. You need mm. to move that up closer to the front. And that was a valuable piece of advice. I moved exactly like they said, I moved that art up. And whenever I've heard people comment on that film, even some of my friends, when they heard you were going to have this event, you know, that you called me up after, you know, 25 years. When they talked about the film, every one of them said the same comment. I remember the part about her seeing the face in the fabric. Mm. So that is, for most people, the one thing that they retain after all these years. And uh, thanks to I Calvin, know, M. Sue John, I feel the same way. Of the film. Uh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to say because I was like, I don't want to. Yes, I agree. I want to hear from Penny. I had it much later in the sequence. So again, Calvin, good job. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that insight into that process. Yeah, Padma. And uh, we have a, a visitor <laughs> comment too that says, thank you, Calvin, for your sharing your beautiful realization of reality and healing process. You have brought hope to many of us as artists and more importantly, humans. Mm. Um, Padma says, if anybody goes to the show, take pictures <laughs> for sure. Yes. We have a, a few more comments in uh, questions in the oh. comments and i will go through some more but again if anybody wants to say something out loud you can just um raise your hand by going down to the reactions button and clicking that can um, we ask if calvin is still watching if he no. wants to say anything no 
Sure. Um, Calvin, I can I can see you right there on the screen. Would you care to say anything? <laughs> oh, that was a little much. Sorry. Um, probably not much. Um, it was a quick... I am just going to say, we want to hear from him, but we... we... I do want to say we're gonna we're working on getting the film. There's a number to call on the Rocky Mountain Women's Quilt or Film Center, so we're gonna we're gonna work on it. I mean, I I love Calvin, but you know what? Listen, let me just say this too, because I don't want to stop the film too much, and we want to hear from Penny, so I can say it now while we're hearing about the film. Um, this is a thing that the pandemic gave us. It really is the ability to or the the familiarity and the comfortability with doing these Zoom things, you know, for museums and stuff. Like, this is pretty awesome to be able to talk to her and people can, you know, watch and comment and, you know, stuff like that. A Zoom call is different from a live stream. I recommend doing a live stream instead of a Zoom call because I we could be doing the Quilt Nerd Show as a Zoom call, but, like, no way. But I do think it's really, it's really cool that this kind of thing is normal for us now because we're able to have these events over the internet and we didn't have that really before you know i mean people did it but it wasn't wasn't normal being a documentarian have in your process have you we have a question from joy asks no. has caroline created any other documentaries you brought forth the complexity of penny and the subjects she works with it really helped us get yeah. to see the real penny so um have you created any other documentaries or is there any other work that um is it all similar that you'd like to share with us? I did I'm, one other doc. I'm, I'm going forward because well, I just saw um, Penny speaking. speaking. Choices here um, of, for inclusion I got you guys. in the documentary, uh, or you know, including including various difficult choices or difficult themes, subject matters in your documentary. There is a question in the comments that kind of gets to. You're welcome. Um, gets at that a little bit it's from shara parks and um it's you know it's it's sort of a question for penny i guess um in the documentary says shara parks a few people were critical of the disturbing content in your quilts oh I interesting I down the name julia um Venetia, ivana i'm getting um, to your question sharing some uh comments about that and the the viewer is asking in what way do you see the crueler aspects of your work penny in response to that and then after that the commenter says your favorite granddaughter annie so that may have been from your granddaughter annie but the question yes is about how did you feel in in looking back at the inclusion of some critical comments about the cruel aspects of your work. Wow, good question. Yes, thank you. I actually love that. Um, and I totally agree. And I have found that by looking into the eyes of the worst parts, it not only improves me, but it teaches me to be kinder as I go forward. So it's both healing and nurturing to me at the same time. Annie, you should be in bed. <laughs> <laughs> is she one of the older ones? Or she is one oh. of the older ones. And she is, Annie should be up here with us because she is a young woman that gives me hope for our world and going forward. Annie is everything I wish I had been. Oh, wow. Hmm. That's really sweet. <laughs> I can think of both <laughs> Um... There's, that might be a good segue to maybe mentioning something about your current exhibition here at the Carnegie Center. Somebody Yay. asked, um, it might have been Cynthia, can you talk about the current exhibit at the Carnegie? And Penny, I know from reading your artist statement for this film that this exhibit was partly inspired by your family. Mm. Um, would you like to talk a little bit about the current show that you have up here at the Carnegie Center? Yes, I would, but I would like to um, answer it in a roundabout way by saying, contact me, questioner, whenever you're going to go to the show or think that you what? can, let me know, pennysister at AOL.com, and I will do my best. Uh, sorry, I'm putting that in there. Really? I mean, okay. I know she's not talking to us specifically, but... 
uh, that was just like a random viewer, so, okay. ...to get down here and show you around in person. What? Oh, no way. Cool. That's very generous of you, Penny. You're always so free with, um... <laughs> yeah, um, with that. In fact, we've already got some people responding. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, how can we contact you? Right. <laughs> we have a few other questions about Penny her, um, and your process. And one of them is, what is your underlying spiritual foundation or mm. belief system and how does that influence your work and process awesome it's a big question oh i love that i do too um my underlying i think this will not satisfy the catholic church which is so uh, what i was nominally raised in uh, i was always sent to church or kirk as we called it but mm. none of the rest of my childhood family went i was their um I, I guess representative in the house of god wow and i prefer and still prefer to pray alone outside under the sky uh, or in silence inwardly um that that's all i can say about that i talk to god pretty much non-stop um because often god the belief god 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 encompasses everything um was the only ear i had growing up and if i was in pain or injured it was the only succor the only um, succor we know what you mean comfort and that remains so also. Yeah. yeah. Um, best friend, buddy, high five, open heart, shine your light. <laughs> the more you shine out, the more God will pour in. Do I sound like one of those strange people? <laughs> she is. <laughs> well, yeah, she's pretty unique. That's true. I mean, um, I'm with you, you so on. Yeah, it, for people who have visited this current show at the Carnegie, you may have seen that we have a back gallery. It's called the Sally Newkirk Gallery, named after our longtime director here. And for this exhibit, we chose to create a kind of like meditative space for people to come and cool. sit in a dark room um, wow. and watch a projection of um, Penny Penny's morning ritual, um, so to speak, of walking into her backyard. Um, That's pretty cool. And into her teepee and lighting a fire and saying prayers. Um, and there's no words. It's not a narrative film. It's just an atmospheric film. And we did that. We filmed that in January specifically because we knew we weren't going to have very many in-person opportunities for people to see Penny because of the pandemic. And people love getting that intimate. I mean, that's what's so great about the film, The Woman of the Cloth, is we get that such this intimate presence. Um, we get this proximity with Penny. And that's what we wanted to create with this one gallery space here in the gallery. Uh, in, the, in the Carnegie Center for this show. So you know, someone in the comments asks sorry. a question about the TP. Um, so really quick, sorry. I don't know. I was reading the chat and engrossed in what she was saying. The chat wasn't on the screen, you guys. I mean, it kind of makes sense that it, you know, we're going to cover up that lady's head a little bit. I guess it makes sense not to have it on there. But what does it look like if we do? Sorry about that. There's like 20 minutes. Like, yeah, under 20 minutes left. I'm going to put it up there. I mean, it kind of covers that lady's head a little bit, but not too much. Not too much. I'm going to keep it on. Unless there are major objections. Okay. So I wanted to mention that if you if you come to see this, yeah, it's this fine. exhibit, I wouldn't cover a penny. Inside like inside no view of her teepee. But the question is, where did you start the tradition of the, the teepee? And how did, where did that come from? How did that come into your life? I love that question because the, the truth is it started
started when I was about three. Um, we don't have tipis on the Orkney Islands, but we do have prayer tents. And if you look to the Orkneys or even a little bit further north uh, to the Icelandic and um, peoples heading into the days of darkness, they need a place of light. And they used to build a tent outside that's very similar to a teepee to keep the snow shedding off its roof, sliding off its roof. And my peoples way back before I was born even, um, would pray in their ice teepees. And so I come from a long line of peoples who have used fabric uh, pyramids, would be another name, as prayer places. And when I came to the Maasai, uh, I resonated very much with their prayer center, which is hey the house also in that, that profile. And when I came to North America, I realized, oh, even the native North Americans pray in a teepee. And probably we could find many other examples, but those are the only ones I've actually sat with and experienced prayer mm. in a triangular shape. It's a very holy thing. Mm -hmm. Even the Christians use it as Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Everything comes down to a triangle. You, thou, me. The perfect triangle. Cool. Mm. Yeah, well, our, our exhibit here is up till April 9th. And um, as I said, the title is Penny Sisto at 80. And that's because, of course, Penny is 80. <laughs> that's um, wild. But also, it's her eighth show. And this number eight just keeps coming mm. up. It's been coming up in conversations with Penny. Um, and, of course, there's so much about the symbol eight. That I agree. That's time, you know standing upright it's the shape of an hourglass and on its side it's the symbol of infinity so there's so many references to time and how it's um you know getting getting older maybe in some ways is also a process of getting younger and i love seeing i don't know watching that film and seeing you saying i'm an old broad now <laughs> you know and that was 25 years ago <laughs> yes yeah. and um you know you said um they asked me how long it's taking me to make these quilts well i'm 54 years old and so it's taken me 54 years so is that how you feel now that you know it well is. it's taken you 80 years to make all of these quilts Yes. Um, and the other thing that happens with age that's wonderful, and nobody tells you the wonderful parts of getting, of getting very, very old. And the wonderfulest part for me is that I can work faster, mm. longer, and swifter. And um, some people would say it's desperation, but I prefer to think it's just life force is like a uh, a stone going downhill, it's picking up things as it goes, so it enlarges itself. Yeah, Robin. And that's how it is as a human. As I roll down that 80th year, everything, heart, mind, prayer, delight, laughter, everything enlarges. It's cool Until she's... Until one day you go, poof, <laughs> and explode. <laughs> that's a nice way to think about dying. I had to write that down. That was amazing. Yeah. Aging is like a, a rolling stone down a hill. Yeah, it's like cool. She says yes, she's going faster. I told one of my daughters, Becky, I think it was this year, um, there's nothing to fear in getting old and approaching death. The whole journey is um, playing towards the climax, and the climax is always the best part. <laughs> And that's how I feel about approaching death. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm sorry. The mystery sorry. will be solved. Sorry. Everything will be answered. Everything in me can disperse. Wow. Like a shooting star. <laughs> I always feel so good talking to you, Penny. Everything that comes out of your mouth is just so warming. Mm. 
I'm sure everybody else agrees too. Um, yeah. Does anyone else have any other cool, Mary questions or comments? Um, we have a couple minutes left and um, we have a, a few minutes for any, any lingering questions. We, we have questions. <laughs> As quilters, right? They would be very comfortable with it. Yeah. It, could we ask that if it, any of Penny's children are watching this, oh, cool. that they would speak up and we could have a little, nice. maybe a little tiny bit of what they what they thought when they were watching this film. And Approved. I think his mom has changed much That's from great what she was a quarter century ago to who she is now. I don't know how to do that. Okay. She's she's oh. the worst. Well, if there is a if there is a penny child on this or grandchild here, all you have Get to do on the is show. Um, unmute yourself I and mean, speak, and we'll see you. There's a Sunny list. Children she's... or grandchildren, they may have gone to bed when you told them to go to bed, Penny. I'm going home for one. <laughs> We have a question saying, how many children do you have? Uh, we know, we know. Oh, that's a good question. Out of my body, there were nine. And still on the planet. I'm going to say seven. If any of you slackers are still up and have an argument with the number seven. It's wow. Bethany. I'm here. I'm the baby. Oh. Hi, Mom. Oh. Oh. Hi, Carolyn. I know. I don't know how to work this computer. I'm sorry. Hold on. This is great. Maybe you'll see me now. Okay. Hi. Oh, no, I'm backlit by a horrible spotlight. Hi. How are you? Excellent. Love. That was beautiful, Mom. Beautiful, Carolyn. It's still applicable. That's the beautiful thing, is that you're older and maybe wiser, but you were so freaking wise 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that that's a possibility. I was talking to your mom about the kids asking what happened to all of them because it's been 20 years since we've seen I them. know. And I asked her about you and she said you got four kids? I do. Yeah, we all have a muckle load, as mom would say. <laughs> a muckle load. There are seven of us and then Meadow and Jay make nine. So wow. nine of us and gosh, 33 grandchildren or something ridiculous. We've all created to our maximum capacity. <laughs> We're taking over. We're that's the goal, right? <laughs> yes, keep, please. Keep mom uh, the stardust alive. Before she becomes a shooting star. Yep. Hey, Mama. Hey, Caroline. Hey, Caroline. Hey, oh. oh my gosh, how nice to see you. They have, this is Becky and Randy. That's and her work back there. I just there. wanted to thank the two of you for your wisdom and beauty and just blazing such a wonderful path for the rest of us girls out here. <laughs> wow. I love you both so much sitting in front of that bush looking gorgeous. Mm. Uh, Julie Leidner thought of this. She said there was a uh, whiteboard behind it, and she thought putting us just sitting in front of a whiteboard. She went out and I think purchased this nice piece uh, of cloth so that we would look good. That's cool. <laughs> so thank you, Julie. <laughs> but it, it's it great to great. see. You. Uh, I'm assuming that's your mate in the background. That's Randy. Uh, it is. That's Randy, my mate, my lover. Yeah. Uh, hey, everybody. I, and I just have to say that I hit the jackpot as far as mother-in-law's uh, Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. You look like you might have some Scottish blood in you. A little bit. You look, you got the, the hair coloring and everything. Yeah. Good. We want some more of that. <laughs> well, Becky, it's very nice. How many kids do you have? I have four. Yes, yeah, so and two girls. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lucky number. It's four in four and four make eight. Ah. Sweet. Well, it's very lo lovely to see you. You too. Well. Um. There, there are more questions in the chat that I that I was really able to to get 
two, but I'll pull out just another um, one or two. So there's a question about whether there's another documentary about Penny's life um, being made or any thoughts about doing that. Um, I'm not sure if, if there's any news on that front to share or not. Penny, do you know? No. <laughs> she would know, right? <laughs> Okay, um, so yes, not not hey, sure about that, but I wouldn't be surprised. Um, hmm. um, there is a question, another question. Um, there's some specific questions. I, I know artists, when they watch talks like this of other artists, artists are always wanting to know more about your process, mm -hmm. and it's just so um, special to be able to, to hear directly from an artist that you revere. Um, so there is there is a couple specific questions questions about the way that you work um one at the very beginning was asking about what kind what kind of fabric you use yeah as backing yes for stitching the faces and figures yeah I just wanted to throw that in there because as an artist myself if, if I were her I would want to know the answer to that yeah <laughs> she uses felt felt. Yeah. Oh. felt because one day I went to Hancock's fabrics decades ago she shops and it was on sale and i bought a huge bolt of it i think we're 100 yards in the bolt wow and um i thought wow this is great <laughs> <laughs> that's funny <laughs> um there's another question that i think i will kind of try to make um make it into a little bit more of a universal question so the question is from renee and it's how do you decide what specific emotion to show in a piece that will touch other women similarly who have not experienced that kind of event? And I think mm. kind of taking a step back from that and thinking about your approach to art as a whole, Penny. Padma, that's um, awesome. That's great. You could ask that, how do you, or do you think about how you create work specifically so that it may touch other people and convince them to feel a certain way or open their mind to emotions that they may not have ever experienced is that part of your intent as an artist yes yes it is and the only way to do that's the way if i'm speaking to somebody i want to impart to them what i'm feeling and I want to feel what they're feeling. Uh, uh, because life, we none of us are alone. We none of us just one unit. We all interconnect. And art is a quick, fast way to make a connection. Mm. That's, um, I like that. It's easier than words. It takes less time than having an affair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you just... Siren. The art or send a message in Siren. the art. And those who look at it will resonate on the level they need at that moment. I think that's the power of art. A, the same picture or the same quote is always changing, depending on the day, the hour, the time, the mood with which you look at it. Mm. And I truly believe there's a magic in fabric. Yay. It's the first thing that touches us when we're born. We're swaddled in it. When they lay me to rest, they will cover me in a shroud of fabric. Fabric wraps us. There's a mystery in that. And a comfort. And I want to say, I think that there has been not just the evolution in her her cloth and her quilting. Uh, I noticed that the pieces, like when we were filming this, a lot of the pieces were social justice issues. Mm -hmm. um, the last two exhibits of hers that I've seen, one in Owensboro and then tonight when I walked around a little bit before uh, this uh, event, her pieces are taking on a more iconic spiritual feeling to me. Instead of having the social justice, 
it almost reminded me of Julie, who was speaking, uh, who said that, you know, she didn't need to look at nightmares. It feels... This is, like, the first moment where Penny's face is, like... Like, we'll see where she's going with this, where the gal's going with this, but it's it's interesting. I don't know. To me, like, they aren't nightmares anymore. They feel to me like uh, they... They speak, you know what I'm saying? But in a very beautiful, rather than a, you know, the social justice one sometimes did feel like, ugh, right into your heart, you know, like a spear. And I, I think when Julie saw this initial film, I think she felt kind of hurt by it that maybe, you know, like she was being put up to be <laughs> look at guy. Look at Penny's... <laughs> Did you see her face? Watch, watch. Hurt by it that maybe, you know, like she was being put up to be the bad guy. And I did not intend that at all. I just wanted to show that there really are two ways of looking at art. And one is the soothing part. And one yeah. is yeah. the consciousness raising part. Um, I think where Penny's work goes now what? It's a combination of those two now. Uh, I think it still raises your consciousness, but it's about spirituality. And maybe that is as we age, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. we are more concerned with spiritual issues rather than uh, a lot of the other parts of life. We've you you grow, hopefully, as we become crones. Mm -hmm. uh, we we are concerned about spirituality and her pieces now, I think just pull you right into that. Uh, and they've become, because they aren't the social justice issues, they've become soothing to the eye as well as expansive to the heart. Uh, hmm. That's what I feel. Do you feel that way? I, I hope I do now. <laughs> I love that. Oh, I'm going to ride on your back. <laughs> it's so good to see her after 20 good. years. It was so nice. Mm. Uh, awesome. Good. Well, well I think that's a great a great place to stop, and it's 829, so um, thanks for that insight, Caroline. I think that was... I'm, I'm with um, you. I, I feel like I feel like Caroline kind of got into the weeds there a little bit, but I think Penny Sisto is made of pure love, so she's like, yes, sure, you know, not like dismissive, but just like, I accept your soul and everything about you, you know? That really hit 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 it on the nose exactly. Um, in fact there's a there's a there's a quilt of Brianna Taylor in this exhibit. And Wow. Yeah. An artist could have could have taken a, a much different approach to the way that, that she is pictured in the quilt, but mm. the way that it is done, it's very, very spiritual. I'd really like to see and that iconic as um, Caroline put it. So I think that's a good example of what, what Caroline was saying. Hmm. So um, wow. I just want to say thank you so much <laughs> again to Caroline Nellis for coming here for, and um, from Evansville to be with us tonight um, and have this conversation. I'm just so thankful. And thank you, Penny, for being thank here you. and for everything that you've done for us at the Carnegie Center. We're so honored to um, to have your work here again so thanks again to everybody else who were um, here tonight we're gonna put this on youtube and we'll talk more about how and thank you for putting it on youtube you know um if you are a person who you know and i so appreciate it when any of you you know tag tag people we talk about on the show and and also i know that I know that um, that's Eric. He's coming to pick me up to go to the doctor, but um, so I can't linger. But um, you know, I know like when the shows are up on YouTube, it's a lot easier to, or it makes a lot, a lot more sense to tag people that we talk about because if they can't see the show yet, because it's only on Twitch for subscribers, the replay it doesn't make sense to tag them yet, you know. But once the shows are on YouTube and putting those on and getting that rhythm going is a process, and I'm working on it. But but you know, eventually, like tagging the Carnegie. Art and History Museum, you know, at um, about this, that we did this and talked about Penny Sisto. And honestly, you know what? I think we should, I think I should like send her this video, right? I mean, we have her email address. I mean, I, I won't expect anything and I won't, 
but why don't I do that, you know? Or maybe I'll put this one up on, you know what? I should put this one on, up on YouTube before the end of that show. Why don't I do that? Why don't I make an exception and put this show up on YouTube in the next few days? And then we can like tag her, I can email her the link because it's really cool. And the show's only up till April 9th. That makes sense, right? Because then more people could see the show. I think that I think that makes sense. I think we can all like get behind that, right? I mean, to post it, to post it now and like put it, put something on Instagram about it, you know? And then like, yeah, tag, I don't know if she has, I don't think she has social media. I think you guys would have found it, but, um, but the Carnegie Museum, you know? Cause this is like a total celebration. We're freaking out about this woman and she's amazing and she's 80 years old and she has this uh, incredible show. So I'm gonna go for it. And um, thank you all so much for being here. That makes sense, right? Okay, cool. Uh, and you all are the best. I love how engaged you are. I love how curious you are. I love that we find the stuff and we get to, to learn it. I mean, it's so cool. Thank you, Penny Sisto. Uh, we'll see you soon. I gotta go get a checkup, make sure I'm gonna live to 80. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk to you all, I'll talk to you tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is Quilter's Newsletter Friday. And I've got I, polls and like a trivia thing I'm working on. So we're gonna look at a 1977 issue of Quilter's Newsletter Magazine together, bring some wine, bring some crisps, and I'll see you tomorrow night, okay? Okay, bye everybody, thanks so much, bye.